Hello and welcome. This is a quick tutorial on modeling cables as spring connectors in SolidWorks simulation. This was designed for Engine 33, but uh, you could use it for whatever you want, I suppose. So let's get started. What we're looking at here is just a bridge that I built on SolidWorks really quickly. The sample bridge has semi arbitrary dimensions. The dimensions are based upon the guidelines uh, provided in the Engines 33 project description. Let's look at the right here. I have a load base and this is uh, analogous to the base that you will be, your bridges will be actually tested against um, as shown in the project description and I've put uh, four split lines, really eight split lines on the base of the bridge um, because that is where we're going to apply our fixtures and our load for the simulation. The two middle ones are uh, 150 millimeters apart which is what the wheels of the load car are um, for the Engines 33 final project um, and then the, uh, the load base is the accurate width as well so we can see the bending in the bridge um, by applying the load on the middle two lines or the middle two bars and then uh, applying the fixtures in the outer two bars. So if we go ahead and do that, I'm going to suppress the load base because we're not going to include that in our simulation. Instead what we're going to do is actually use these bars as fixtures. So I've already started this simulation um, and you can see that's See if we can hide these springs. Uh, there's a lot of springs. I'm not going to bother hiding all the springs. I'll just show you how to put those springs in, um, and then we can uh, talk about what those springs will actually do to your simulation. So the first and most important part of your simulation is this fixed geometry here. So you'll notice um, what I've done is just fix the area where uh, there's contact with that load base, which are these two bars on the either side. And um, you may or may want not want to use fixed geometry. You may or may want to use um, roller slider geometry here. Uh, that's sort of up to you to figure out in your simulation. And on the top, I've applied a load along these two bars. And that, like I said before, that's going to be the load car. And you'll notice I have these springs where I might put cables on my bridge. Um, and those are uh, what I'm going to talk about in just a second. So if you notice here, let's see. Um, without the springs, you would imagine that the middle of the bridge will get bent in um, as this bridge will essentially be in three-point bending uh, if you add those two load forces together and, and put them at the midpoint. And what the, the idea with the cables is to somehow alleviate that bending. And I don't think my design is currently the best here, but it's just a design for demonstration. So let's go look at how we would add these connectors. So if you right-click on the connections drop-down, on the right side of your, I mean, on the, sorry, on the left side of your screen, you'll see you have component contacts. If you make that, if you press that little plus, you'll see global contact bonded. So that means all the parts in your assembly are simply just uh, glued together with a infinitely strong glue. So they're bonded, so they can't move. These connections, if you click on uh, the tab above it, you won't have any connections by default. But what I've done is added eight spring connectors which you can see here and I'm going to go through the process of adding one of those so what you do is you'd right click on so let, why don't I just delete one of these and redo it and I'm saving time by um, not doing all of these over again because it it is a little tedious to enter them all in, in one out of in a time at a row or in a row all right, here we go. So let's do a new spring connector. So we're going to right click on connect the connections tab here and we're going to apply a spring. 
we can also find this by cl clicking the arrow under the connections advisor button on the command manager and click spring with the spring connector the most important thing you have to remember if you're modeling a cable in tension is this spring will only be an extension spring uh, if we were to compress this spring there would be no uh, no response no force response and we're using the spring between two locations not two flat parallel faces or flat parallel faces or concentric cylindrical faces two locations and you're actually just going to define those locations with a point and so when you're actually building your bridge you'll um, probably have a hole that you'll stick your your uh, cable through and so you just want to use um, somewhere close to where you're going to be applying your spring and you can get more accurate um, by uh, including a hole or a split line um, and we can maybe talk about that later if you have a question next um, we have to define the uh, parameters of our spring and we want the spring to model a cable so we're actually going to define the spring to have a very high axial stiffness Axial stiffness is the amount of force it is, that is required to extend this spring one meter. Uh, and if you guys measured your cables, they should you should have a value for how much force it either takes to break it with a small displacement or how much force it takes to break it with no displacement. And if there's no displacement, take that force and divide it by something very small like 0 0.01. Uh, or 0 0.001 meters and that would be your force so to simulate that I'm just gonna apply a very large force a hundred thousand meters newtons per meter and then um, we don't care about this value which is the tangential stiffness because that is actually uh, not relevant for cables and same with rotational stiffness cables don't have attentional uh, attention uh, sorry a tangential or rotational stiffness that is relevant to the simulation and a preload you can apply a preload that's if you were to install your cables already with some tension in them that's what's called the preload and that can be advantageous uh, for loading but if you do too much preload you could see how it would make your bridge very brittle and potentially easier to break so we'll do just 10 newtons for now these are totally ballpark values um, you should spend some time calculating what values would work best for your bridge and I'm going to hit OK. And that created my spring connector. And that's really all it is. So I just did it um, 16 times, I guess. And because uh, I've got 8 on the top and 8 on the bottom. And my fixture and my load, and that's all there is really to it. So when I hit run, it'll mesh the bridge and then solve it. And You'll notice the simpler your geometry is, the, the faster your thing will run. So if you have complex things in your model, um, you should probably try to make them as simple as possible. So if we look, you can see there's some deformation there. As expected, the springs don't actually affect the uh, projected deformation, but what they do project, what they do affect is um, the, the stress calculations. So you can see this maximum stress, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 7th uh, newtons per meter squared, um, is actually uh, affected by those springs. And if I were to run this calculation without the springs, uh, you would notice a higher, um, a higher maximum stress. And ultimately, what you're trying to do with this simulation is figure out where your where and at what stress uh, at what force application your bridge is going to fail so this will be helpful for determining um, how how much more force your bridge can take given the proper loading of cables uh, the proper application of cables to your bridge thanks for watching if you have any questions uh, feel free to get at me and um, I'll probably run a help session sometime this week. Thank you and goodbye.